I don't negotiate with gutless murderers. The Book of Boba Fett has been one of Disney's most successful original series. It saw bounty hunter Boba Fett ditch his old ways and help bring peace to the planet of Tatooine from his place in Mos Espa. He had to deal with plenty of enemies along the way, including the Pike Syndicate and his old mentor turned rival, Cad Bane. Luckily, Fett had plenty of help along the way, teaming up with gigantic Wookiee, Black Chrysanthemum, a team of Tatooine youths, the entire town of Mos Pelago, now known as Freetown, and the Mandalorian himself, Din Djarin. Suffice to say, it was an exciting and action-packed series. And with rumors about of a second series of The Book of Boba Fett, we're going to look at five things we want to see if and when it finally makes it to our screens. Oh, and by the way, there may be potential spoilers for Mandalorian Season 3 in this video too, so if you don't want to be spoiled, turn back now. You've been warned. I'm Cobb Vanth, Marshal of Mos Pelgo. The Return of Cobb Vanth Chapter 7 From the Desert Comes a Stranger sees Boba Fett start to put his team to help free the city of Mos Espa. He sends Din Djarin to speak to the Marshal of the outlying town Freetown, Cobb Vanth. Vanth is pretty non-committal, though it is implied he understands the stakes, and he says he will talk to his people. Unfortunately, and as the title suggests, from the desert comes a stranger, and we are treated to a high noon western movie-styled showdown between Vanth and bounty hunter Cad Bane. Bane shoots down Freetown's deputy first, before turning his blaster on Vanth, seemingly killing him. However, in a post credit scene after the final episode, we see Cobb Vanth recuperating in the Bacta tank in Boba's palace. So do we think Vanth will be back? Yes, he has to be. They wouldn't have shown us that he was still alive if not. But how could he be incorporated into the story? Well, the solution is simple and was already set up in the season finale. In that episode, Boba expressed that he was not suited to life as a peaceful ruler, with Fennec Shan replying, if not them, then who? Well, we think leadership of the town could be handed off to a recuperated Cobb Vanth. He is well respected, knows how to rule, is firm, friendly, and fair, and could maintain the peace in the streets of Mos Espa. This would not only free up Boba to go on more adventures in Season 2, but it could fold Vanth very naturally back into the story. But it's not just Cobb Vanth that we hope will make a return. There is another character. I paid Marshal Vanth a visit. You should have never left him without his armor. The Return of Cad Bane that's right, we think that we're going to see merciless bounty hunter Cad Bane up to his old tricks again. But how? Good question. We seemingly saw him killed in the streets by Boba Fett in one final showdown, right? We did. We witnessed a Tusken Raider's gaffy stick being stabbed through his body and seemingly breathe his last breath. But as the camera gives us one last shot of the bounty hunter laying lifeless in the sand, it focuses on a blinking light on the panel on his chest. While we would normally say this means nothing, just a bit of costume decoration, they also chose to include the distinct sound of a strong and steady beeping emitting from it, almost as if indicating a heartbeat. The plot thickens. So do we think we have seen the last of Cad Bane? Definitely not. As a fan favorite in the Clone Wars TV series, the book of Boba Fett marked his first live-action appearance. We don't think they're going to squander the character by quickly killing him off in the first season. In fact, we think they're going to want to make him much more of a threatening presence that lives up to his legend. So now for our season 2 theory, and it's a simple one. We think Cad Bane will be back and on the tail of the man who killed him, Boba Fett. This sets up a natural and very dangerous antagonist for our main character to deal with in the second series. And if he is the main bad guy, we think Cad Bane will be merciless because this time it really is personal. Tell your client negotiations are terminated. You're going soft in your old age. Boba Fett will leave Tatooine. One of the first criticisms of the first series of The Book of Boba Fett is that it was primarily set on Tatooine. Not that there's anything wrong with the planet. It's just been pretty overused in Star Wars media in general. So we think that when season two rolls around, we're going to be heading off planet pretty sharpish. Now we've already gone over who we think will be left in charge while Boba is off world. Cobb Vanth, can you see all of our theories starting to knit together now? So where might Boba go? We've got a pretty good theory. We think he's going to repay a favor and help out a friend, the Mandalorian, Din Djarin. Now the predominant theory is that Din is heading to Mandalore in season three of his own show, but he will meet a lot of resistance when he gets there. Din is the owner of the Dark Saber and as such has the right to rule Mandalore. This didn't sit well with Bo-Katan and her Mandalorian clan, so we think that Boba will swoop in and stand by Din Djarin while on his quest to control the planet. With the events of the Book of Boba Fett and the Mandalorian being so intertwined, we'd be surprised if we didn't get this team up again. We're not saying that Boba and Din are going to spend every single episode together. Together. They might form a plan and go off and do their own separate things and meet up at the end. 
There are so many possibilities as to how the two could work together, in the same way they worked together to defend Mos Espa. Suffice to say, at least we will be away from Tatooine in the Book of Boba Fett Season 2, for a while at least. Mayor Mark Shays is on their payroll and has flown off-world, which leads us to believe the storm is about to break. We won't hear the name Slave One. Ever since Disney acquired Star Wars, they've been trying to put the more controversial elements on the back burner. For example, they now call the iconic Leia in the gold bikini Hut Slayer Leia instead of Slave Leia. Similarly, Boba Fett's starship has been known as Slave One ever since its appearance in The Empire Strikes Back. However, Disney have instead named in Boba Fett Starship or the Fire Spray. We totally understand the move to separate themselves from ideas such as slavery. However, it's an unnecessary and almost arbitrary change that has no bearing on anything, whether they changed it or not. On the other hand, the Fire Spray is a cool sounding name too, and that is the official class of his ship. Slave One's model has always been referred to as, as a modified Fire Spray 31 class patrol and attack craft. So Disney have just latched onto the Fire Spray part, and it works, and it still sounds threatening threatening and kind of scary, so we don't mind the alteration. Here's the thing though, Boba's starship has only ever been called Slave One in supplementary material such as novels and reference books, but never in live action. There are a million ways in which they could avoid saying the name while still keeping it canon. However, with that being said, we think the name Slave One is dead and buried at this point, and despite fans insisting that's what Boba's starship is called, we almost certainly won't be hearing the name Slave One in the Book of Boba Fett Season 2. Extend my greetings and appreciation the mayor's tribute. We will see other bounty hunters from The Empire Strikes Back. When we first met Boba Fett, he is on the bridge of Darth Vader's Super Destroyer, the Executor. Alongside him are several other bounty hunters. Dengar is a bandaged and gnarly looking human from Corellia. Bosk is the scaly humanoid lizard like Trandosian. Thor Lom is the bug eyed killer protocol droid. Zuckus is the squat and insight like Gand. And finally, IG 88 is the thin and wiry murder bot. There have been rumors swirling that a handful of these characters will be appearing alongside Fett if and when season 2 happens. There are plenty of Trandosian models that can be customed slightly to create Bosk. We have recently seen a droid very similar to Forlom in the Obi-Wan Kenobi series, and IG-88 is basically IG-11 from The Mandalorian, but with fewer bandoliers. Including extra bounty hunters would be a great way to let Boba prove his worth. The Book of Boba Fett Season 1 was somewhat criticized for not showing Boba to be the badass killer that fans had always expected him to be, with him instead settling into the role of Daimyo of Mos Espa. That could very easily be course corrected in Season 2, giving Boba some competition from his erstwhile bounty hunting partners will give him the opportunity to stand out from the crowd and really reassert himself as a powerful and badass bounty hunter, as well as a firm but fair daimyo. Also, these bounty hunters could make good enemies of the week kind of characters, with Cad Bane being the big boss behind it all. That's just one of our theories, anyway. I'd be careful where I was sticking my nose if I were you. So now it's over to you. What do you think of our theories for the Book of Boba Fett Season 2? Do you have any theories of your own as to what you think could happen in the second season? Be sure to let us know in the comments section down below. We love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Thanks for watching, and as always, may the Force be with you.